speedrunning community knows them as wrong warps. These are glitches that manipulate a game into putting the players someplace they shouldn't normally be, often the ending credits of the game. With that explanation out of the way, these are 10 of the most incredible wrong warp glitches in any game. I'm Hellbent, and today I'll be your narrator. Number 10. Crash Team Racing, PlayStation 1. We'll start off with a glitch that doesn't even require you to actually start the story mode. Crash Team Racing has an actual adventure mode that you can go through, but with this glitch you don't even need to touch it. Instead, you go into versus battle mode with two players, red and yellow. Then you have red win 19 times in a row on the rocky road map, hitting retry after each round. Once the record stands at 19 to 0, hit change setup, then start battle at the next screen. This activates a warp that sends you directly to the credit sequence. It can also be used to warp to other spots in the game simply by winning more or less than 19 times in a row. Number 9. Super Mario Bros. 3 NES This is one of the most famous wrong warp glitches in the speedrunning community. It involves setting the values for certain enemy positions in such a way that the game's memory overflows, glitches out and warps Mario right into the room with the princess. That plus a glitch that sends Mario down an invisible pipe, activates some arbitrary code that tells the game to simply warp to the credit sequence. This wrong warp means an entire Mario 3 speedrun can be completed in under 3 minutes total. Number 8. The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past Super Nintendo Entertainment System A glitch very early on in A Link to the Past allows Link to basically turn invisible and skip the entire game. Jumping off a ledge with Zelda in tow, then pausing and hitting save and quit while in midair starts the sequence. Reloading the game and getting hit by the guard with the ball and chain basically knocks Link off the map entirely. From there, he can walk in any direction, completely unaffected by the environment, and simply warp through a bunch of rooms and walk right past Ganon for the Triforce. Number 7. Pokemon Yellow Game Boy Color This glitch literally allows the game to be beaten in about 2 minutes. It's a save corruption glitch that involves overflowing the item and Pokemon menus with junk data by turning off the game while saving. This makes the game believe you have 255 Pokemon out of a possible 151. Throwing away a certain amount of Master Ball items before even leaving your house basically reprograms where the front door of your house leads. Normally, it'd lead to Pallet Town, so you can choose your starter. But pull this glitch off right, and walking out of your front door will instead warp you straight to Professor Oak, waiting to congratulate you for becoming Pokemon League Champion. Number 6. Yoshi's Island Super Nintendo Entertainment System The glitch that sends Yoshi to the end of the game in Yoshi's Island is sort of the stuff of nightmares. You basically need to be a master programmer to figure out the exact nature of the glitch, but it involves completing the first level in a very particular way. This is to do with sprite location setups, much in the same way as the wrong warp glitch in Mario 3. Only this one has Yoshi extending his tongue infinitely until it starts eating up the game's internal memory itself. Eventually, the game just freaks out and sends you to the credit sequence. Number 5. Ori in the Blind Forest, Xbox One and PC This is easily the newest game on the list, but the techniques used to activate this glitch are similar to older games. The warp glitch here is actually a delicate combination of several other glitches that affect the physics and movement mechanics. One of the glitches allows Ori to teleport at times you shouldn't be able to. This combines with other glitches known as lift storage and warp displacement. Doing all three just right allows a warp to the ending of the game. Number 4. Super Mario World Super Nintendo Entertainment System There are a lot of Mario games that have been broken to pieces by the speedrunning community. That's largely because Mario has one of the biggest and most rabid fan bases. So, this Super Mario World glitch has a lot in common with the other Mario glitches that crash the game into the credits. It's a lot of setting up shells and executing things that shouldn't normally be possible. But unlike the other two, this can be done in the very first level and theoretically in under a minute. Number 3. Magination Game Boy Color Magination isn't a well-known game and it doesn't have a very active speedrunning community. 
but Pokemon does. And somebody figured out something important out about the Game Boy while breaking Pokemon Red. The Game Boy doesn't clear its data when you turn it off, which means the same memory overflow used to warp to the end of Pokemon can also be used to warp to the end of a different game. Imagination was the first game discovered to be able to run script written in Pokemon to glitch to the end. Number two. Donkey Kong Country Super Nintendo Entertainment System Wrong warps in Donkey Kong Country don't put you precisely at the end of the game, but they do skip you to one of the latest levels in the game. The glitch involves using an invisible barrel to confuse the game's memory about where the player is. Then the player walks through the door on a stage into a completely different stage. The setup is very precise, but it allows the game to be beaten in under 9 minutes, even doing the final boss fight without exploits. Number 1 The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time Nintendo 64 Despite being one of the most influential and important games of all time, Ocarina of Time is kind of a busted mess when you really get down to it. The game is full of bugs, glitches, and exploits, one of the most famous of which is Ganondor. This glitch manipulates game memory when leaving a dungeon via the blue warp ring. Normally, that ring warps Link to the outside of the dungeon, but instead it can warp him from the exit of the first dungeon, the Great Deku Tree, to the Tower of Collapse, the sequence just before the final boss fight. That's why the game can be beaten in about 17 minutes. Of course, this glitch also frequently crashes the game, so it's not the most reliable thing. So, what's the craziest glitch you've ever seen in a video game? Tell us about it in the comments below and we'll pin our favorite up to the top. This video was made possible by our fans over on Patreon. Thanks for your support, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.